anxiety inducing if I am walking through it alone. Um, yeah, like um, working, even working at a booth with my exhibitor badge on, like working the cash register, like some people may feel really uncomfortable today. Um, it's like there's a level of entitlement still. Yeah, a friend of ours uh, called out some guy this morning for like just taking pictures of people's butts without that, without asking, obviously without asking. <laughs> How would you ask that? Um, excuse me, ma'am. Can I take a picture of your butt? <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to worry about the madness, but I do. I do want to mention like that is like universal, like the whole Magic the Gathering oh, thing. God, yeah. and that was also awful. Right. Like that's always oh, yeah. awful. Like, don't, magic the Gathering. Oh, the, the, there was a guy that took pictures of people at a Magic the Gathering thing with their with their pants, pants were low. Oh, right, yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. Like, and people are trying to argue who's trying to help the community. I'm like, no, you tell the person. Yeah. You don't yeah. take a picture of them, and I don't care if their face wasn't in it. Like, right. and and you can't tell. Anyway, but like, and I don't want to what about the men's panel, but like, it's never okay. But no, it's, it's, it's there's a lot more aggression, yeah. I think, if you if you're feminine presenting than female. Yeah. Uh, but it's never ever okay, and you, I do feel like you get targeted more if you look feminine. Um, and it, uh, people will say like, I, I've had people argue it's because you're small, so you're easy target. I'm like that has nothing to do with it <laughs> because it's every woman that I know or feminine presenting person. Right. So. I haul around 80 pound wheels of cheese for a living. I could probably beat you up. Um, and I still get it. Um, so calling out. I think it's important. Um, if you have, if you feel safe doing it. Right, like how do, you, how do you strike that balance between on the one hand, calling out behavior that you see as either making a space unsafe or making you feel unsafe, um, but also taking care of yourself. Because like at Gen Con, like, we're here to be at a convention and to have fun and see our friends. How do, you, how do you strike that balance? Uh, that's the thing that men can do. Presenting yeah. yeah. people can do uh, is people with privilege yeah. in general. Yeah, uh, it's like some people say, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm like, yeah, I understand people are shy or introverted. No problem. I'm not uh, But if you are, like, I, people say, I don't want to talk over you or talk for you. I'm like, if I'm being harassed, I would love if you could speak yeah. up and say, hey, I do. That's not cool. And you know what? If I see someone being harassed, I just walk up to the person and go, hey, what's up? You good? Yeah. Are you okay? Do you need some help? And then, they, like, talking to that person and then not, like, speaking for them. Yeah. And it also sucks. It, this sucks. It's, but it's a truth right now that if a guy calls out another guy, they're more likely to listen to the guy. Yeah. And yeah. it sucks, but that's a way you can help because you're modeling the Right. You're, about, you're like, that's not cool, bro. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, that's been really helpful and it's made me feel safer. But yeah, this, it is hard if you're alone. Um, and it's just a nice surprise. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh like, my god, it's such a surprise, and that's really depressing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there great. are a few yeah. people that yeah. it's not a surprise yeah. for me, but yeah. I, I, that's just at my at my old job. Um, we were all sitting at the lunch table, and the guy across from me asked what I thought of some new game that was really really awful to about women, and. My friend uh, was sitting right next to me, and he just goes on this giant rant about how awful the game was and how it was degrading to women, and like all of the intersectional problems with it, like even with racism. And I just sat there eating a sandwich. And it was it was the most delicious oh sandwich I ever had. Yeah. Like, I still think about that day. It's nice. Oh, it's nice to not be token. Yeah, like, yeah. But, but anything you have to worry about. But. Yeah. So no, yeah. I mean, like if it's a friend, I'll throw down. I'll <laughs> whatever. But like I also don't like I try not to go to the dealer's hall if I'm alone. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. bullshit. Mm -hmm. But uh so that I have someone to like also if I get harassed to like also witness it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like go to the the authorities yeah. with it. The gen con. There isn't an easy solution to it right now. Like no. that when people are like, how do we change this? It's like that's where it really comes with people that have the privilege and have the have the situation of speaking up and being like this isn't okay, I'm not okay with it, examining their own behavior. Because I can be as confident as I, confident as I want to people who might still try to rub the side right. of my head, which has happened. Uh, yes. Touch my tattoo. It's on my upper left thigh, mm -hmm. yeah. for anyone wondering. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, like the first time that you call out somebody for shitty behavior, oh, scary. You, you, like, you're, you're, it's, your skin is going to be painful. Like it's gonna feel so cold. awkward. And you're gonna worry that you're, especially if it's somebody you know, you're gonna worry that your friend's not gonna look at you the same way again. And you just, you just sort of have to kind of play through the pain. You gotta, it, it's totally normal for it to feel excruciating and awkward and terrible. 
But the thing you have to understand is that's how the woman that you're sticking up for or the femme you're sticking up for feels all the time. And uh, you mentioned like you don't want to, you might be infringing on like a friendship and things like that. You'd be really surprised too. And sometimes if like, you call them out, they're like, oh my God. Right? right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's extremely helpful. And if they don't do that, they're a shitty friend. <laughs> you shouldn't be friends with that person. Like actually, like I like if I've called out people before who I like thought were friends, and they were totally jerks about it. Like they were the worst. And I'm not friends with them anymore. Because if you like, if you're like, oh no, it's okay. I'm okay with like being sexist. I don't want to be friends. Right. Well, it's ironic. Yeah. 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 Like I've got such such a strong stake in people not telling like rape jokes around me. Um, because that triggers me. That that like really actively impacts my well being. Um, so and so when someone when someone makes a joke like that, I, I start immediately doing the math. Like, well, okay, like how am I comfortable being with you in a crowd? Okay, probably. Am I comfortable walking someplace with you? Uh, would I be in an elevator with you? Probably not. Would I get a drink with you? Oh my god, no. Like that's sort of like the levels of trust. Um, and the second someone starts making comments like that, like how someone gets handles being called out, makes a huge difference for yeah. me in terms of how much how much I'm willing to trust them. And full disclosure, I got called out today. So like, uh, it was a because uh, there's microaggressions. We all do it. Um, it is, and if someone is like, hey, that's not cool. Can you clarify microaggression? What microaggression oh, microaggression. Are um, a microaggression. Um, it's the way that it is. Like people, like, there's a drop of water. It's like, it's like a little comment that someone. And if there's only one or two, it's not a big deal. And if they're usually like a gender comment or a, a racial comment or something about um, being queer or trans or, or an assumption. An assumption, yeah. an assumption like a good assumption, I guess, would be um, if you're Asian, your Asian yeah. pronouns or if you're Asian, you're good at that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, because it can even be a positive thing. And the reason that they're microaggressions, they're little tiny things and they're not intentionally meant to hurt someone, but they build up because um, you hear them all the time. And uh, we all do. We all have our biases, we all have our problems. And if someone's like, hey, like that's not cool, or gently corrects you, which is what happened to me, uh, then you go, oh, like, and you try to, you know, like, I'm probably this person. But like, you, you, you have to kind of, if you are the one that gets corrected, yeah, it stinks, it sucks to be corrected. It's like, ah. Oh. But maybe if someone, especially if more than one person has corrected you, and if they're, and especially if they're doing it gently, because I hate seeing people flip out if someone's like, hey, that might not be cool. Uh, Kind of maybe examine what you're thinking, why you're doing uh, and to make your community better, to make yourself better. Someone, someone I know who's very dear to me once said, um, like I, I corrected him on one thing, and he was like super great about it. And I was like, wow, that was great. He, he said, um, if all it takes to make someone comfortable around me is to like change one word that I say, why would I? Not do that? And if you are so invested in that word. Yeah. Are you so yeah. invested in it? Especially with people who do that are like, well, it's just a word. Yeah. Right. Well, then why is it so then why is it yeah. important? I've done that with people who are like pronouns and, I, and like a cis person that'll say that. And I'm, especially if it's a guy, I'm like, okay, uh, I'm starting calling them she. I don't like to do that, uh, but I have done it. And kind of, in certain cases, a certain people I know, they've been like, oh, like that doesn't mm -hmm. And given given how hard it is for me to sort of work work up the courage to call someone like someone calling calling you out, especially someone calling you out gently, um, with very very like kindness and care, is a huge amount of work. Um, it is a gift as far as I am concerned. Like someone is taking the time and the energy to be like, hey, I don't think you meant that thing you just said. Maybe reconsider. Maybe reconsider that. Um, think about how you're affecting these people you say you care about. Right. Um, and even, even if they're doing it in a voice that makes me feel hurt, um, like the, like, oh crap, I messed up, mm -hmm. feeling of panic is never more important than their anger and hurt over being triggered, over being marginalized, because you have just repeated something that they hear probably every single day and have heard probably every day of their life. And those are not equal hurts. And, and even if you didn't say it in a weaponized way, other people have. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Call people up. Yeah. Respect anger. Respect, respect it when someone, when someone's like, hey, that really fucking hurt. Mm -hmm. um, so 
can we talk a little bit, so I mean, you mentioned a little bit stepping in for each other, um, the backup project. You guys all familiar with the backup project? Um, Does anyone here not know what the backup project is? The, the backup okay. project, oh, this is really good. Yeah, <laughs> I really like the backup project a lot. It is an initiative, um, so you can order from them purple ribbons to stick on your badge that say backup. And the implicit pledge that you are making when you put that ribbon on is that if you see someone who looks uncomfortable, who looks like they may feel unsafe, that you will step in, that you will be their backup. Or that somebody can come to you. Yeah, or that someone can come to you and you will listen. Uh, and there are, I've been told there are backup ribbons at uh, the Green Roman booth. Uh, so yeah, if Donna after Pryor. Yeah, Donna Pryor has them. So if you want to drop by and pick some up. Um, Sorry, where? Mm -hmm. uh, the Green Ronin booth in the dealer hall. Um, and there have been some arguments about like whether or not this is a good project because you don't have to be vetted to have a backup ribbon. Um, I haven't really heard of any issues with it. And it's just like any other situation. If you go to the authorities here, you don't have a guarantee that they're that they're actually fully bought into it. Um, but I've never had an issue with the backup ribbon situation. Um, and so if you're particularly someone who does feel comfortable calling us about, feels comfortable um, helping someone find a safe space, or if you're really knowledgeable about the con and know where they can go to get help, these are this is a really good way to like make it clear to someone that's looking for you, looking for that and doesn't necessarily want to talk to a volunteer or can't find one. So, Kikia, the full name is the Open Source Women Back Each Other Up and Gentlemen's Auxiliary. <laughs> I think that's how it started. Um, I think it started as a tech tech initiative. Um, I think that's those are all of the notes that I have that I want to address. I wanted to say make sure that we saved some time for like, questions and audience participation. Is there anything else that you want to make sure that we touch on before we open up the floor? It's good that you're here. Yeah, it's nice to see you all. You're all looking very nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if people have questions, I would love I would love to open up for questions or sharing. Um, I cannot promise cannot promise that I will be polite. Um, or that I will. Yeah, or that I will answer them, but I would love it if we had a little discussion. Otherwise, I mean, feel free to go if you have games. <laughs> so, so if we're talking about a cultural change in, in any culture, in the subculture, uh, do you do you see the fight for more inclusion of women and women's rights in the gaming culture um, as a separate front from the LGBT, uh, LGBT fight, or do you see it as a unified front? Do you think that those things need to be handled separate or together? So the question was, um, do we see a fight for women's rights um, as separate from or sort of tied to fights for GLBT rights, um, or even to broaden it a little bit, um, uh, anti-racist effort, efforts, anti-fascist efforts in geeky communities? All oppression is intersectional, so all solidarity needs to be intersectional. But at the same time, we uh, we do need to recognize that, if, for example, if you're a member of one of those groups and not the other, that you have privilege in that other situation, and you need to listen to the people of that oppressed group. Just because I am a, like, just because I am a woman, doesn't mean I know what it's like to be a person of color. So I need to listen to their anger and listen to them when they correct me on right. my microaggressions. But there's definitely an intersection, and they definitely fall under an umbrella. Yeah, uh, they need to be worked on. Like I said earlier, like they're parallel. Uh, they definitely need to be discussed. And there are people, you know, there are women who are LGBT, there are LGBT women who are of color, like those are all things that need to be right. worked on together. And it's also important to remember that one of the best things you can do when you're trying to be intersectional with these things is make space and listen to other groups. Mm -hmm. um, being intersectional doesn't always mean just j jumping in somebody else's movement or somebody else's action. It's, it's lending support to them and being supportive while they talk and helping them do the work that they need to do with the trust that they're going to help you. Right. Um, in the wake of the UC Santa Barbara campus shootings, uh, where a men's rights activist uh, took a gun and shot women, um, or, and that was, aiming, was a, aiming, a, aiming, aiming at women, um, there was a hashtag on Twitter called Yes All Women, um, talking about the experiences that women have uh, with sexism every day, with uh, a level of entitlement to women's bodies, to women's sexualities. Uh, but one thing that kept uh, being brought up and then sort of shut down was like, well, if you're not a feminist, like, why aren't you paying attention? Um, because feminism has a really long history, actually, of not being for black women or being for women of color or being for trans women right. for disabled women. And, um, and yes, all women was started by a black woman and pretty quickly erased. Mm -hmm. 
from, yeah. from the general pop culture knowledge. And there was also a, a corollary for yes, all trans women who were women who were discussing a trans women who were feeling left out or alienated by the hashtag with women. Cis women were not addressing their own privilege in that sense. Right. So. I mean, I would, I would say like, yes, all women, but not all women the same and not all women equally. Um, Capital W yeah. women as opposed to women. Other questions, comments? Yes? Um, when you're talking about a woman with, who works in the industry, when you're talking about your blog and, and the reaction to your article that got posted, and it, and it was within the industry, isn't that pretty much, from what I've read, because of the uh, nature of the industry being so predominantly male, and especially predominantly male under a certain age, is kind of, I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm just saying this seems like it's built in and institutionalized and, and how would you or anyone address that? Demolish the institution? <laughs> okay. uh, just, just because that's the way that it exists now, it doesn't mean that that's the way that it has to exist. Um, and, and a lot of the reason why, especially like the video game industry, is predominantly uh, white men under the age of 40 is just because that's, it's because of a lot of larger factors. It's because of um, the instability of uh, how people get laid off after, after game ship and because there aren't really the same kinds of uh, benefits and games and a lot of, uh, and, and a lot of dumb cultural stuff like the idea of getting drunk at work while you're busting some code and, um, tell us yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but then also, lie. if you're sober, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and, and the thing is, that's really interesting. Um, and there was actually a discussion of this uh, on Twitter earlier this week. Is that um, women who, who don't like the idea of, of drinking at work? It's probably not because they don't don't want to drink. It's because of what men do when they start drinking. That's the other point. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it is. It is sort of the problem with it. Like the problem is baked into the industry. But that just means that we have to fix the industry. We're not able to. Um, we're not able to just wash our hands of it and be like, I guess this is the way it's going to be forever. Um, we have to. We have to actively work at dismantling the, the barriers that exist in order to get a larger and uh, a larger and more diverse experience into the industry. Um, I wanted to touch really quickly. I think we sort of circled around this point a couple times, um, but this sort of myth of fake girls directly impacts the financial success of women in these industries. Like this is not just like people having their feelings hurt, as though that didn't matter, um, but this is about people's livelihoods and careers um, as much as it is about uh, creating an, an inclusive and welcoming community. Like when I say support female creators, it's because we're not Right, and there's, the, there's that anecdote like J.K. Rowling wrote as J.K. Rowling because her publisher told her that no one will buy a book um, by a female author. That's extremely common in the book. Right. But a lot of the initial initials that you see are women. Uh, I wanted to kind of add on that a little bit if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, with the, like, pulling down the institution. I don't want to, I obviously can't speak for all women or all feminists, but I would like to say that like, people are like, well, why are you doing this? Because you, like, it, nothing's ever going to change. Um, Things change. We don't expect it to change overnight. Uh, right. I would say most of us, most people that are involved with this are very well aware that it, cultural change takes time. I don't plan on seeing this be like where I would like it to be uh, in my life, but that is, I have nieces. Uh, I would love to be able to say when they're my age or older that they're like, really, you have to put up with that? That, I'm long gaming it. Like, yeah. And I think yeah. most of yeah. us understand that that's what's yeah. going on. It, yeah. it, is, it is small steps to a larger picture. So. I have uh, a younger sister four years younger than me, and she is just now starting to grapple with street craftsmen and the realities of living in a rape culture, and it breaks my heart. Um, I do this because I don't think anyone's younger sister, no one should have to watch the younger sister get let. No one should have to have to grapple with uh, that reality. Daughter's friends. Daughter's friends. Yes. Um, women are people. <laughs> like, we're not, we're not just people who are related to men. Yeah. Anything else? 